Research gaps are the areas of knowledge that have not been extensively explored or remain unaddressed within a particular field or the topic. Recognizing and addressing these gaps is crucial for advancing knowledge and ensuring the significance and originality of a PhD dissertation. Today, I will discuss the seven types of research gaps along with practical examples, definitions, and relevant references to help researchers understand this important must-know fundamental concept. Before diving into different research gaps, I want to remind you that if you are new to this channel, please subscribe to Research Compass 303 and hit the bell icon and stay tuned for upcoming videos and posts related to advanced research methods, learning and teaching. A research gap is a question or a problem that has not been answered by any of the existing studies or research within your field. Sometimes a research gap exists when there is a concept or new idea that has not been studied at all. Sometimes you will find a research gap if the existing research is outdated and needs new updated research studies. For example, studies on internet use in year 2001. Or perhaps a specific population has not been well studied. For example, perhaps there are plenty of studies on teenagers and video games, but not enough studies on toddlers and video games. These are just a few examples, but any research gap you find is an area where more studies and more research need to be conducted. Research gaps should be systematically arranged and categorized according to their utility. Consequently, researchers now possess a fundamental structure for recognizing them in the literature. For example, Miles 2017 proposed a model comprising seven research gaps. Now let's examine each of the categories and to understand these types of research gaps. For example, the first one is evidence gap. The second category is knowledge gap. And the third category is related to practice practical knowledge gap. The fourth category is methodological gap. And fifth category is empirical gap. Sixth category is theoretical gap. And finally, the seventh category is contextual gap or population gap or the data gap. Now we can look at each of these examples on the types of research gaps by providing clear explanations and practical examples. This will enable us to identify these gaps in our knowledge and consider strategies for addressing them. The first category is evidence gap. An evidence gap occurs when a provocative exception arises if a new research finding contradicts widely accepted conclusions. This gap needs to be clarified in the findings of the prior research. It occurs if results from studies allow for conclusions in their own right, but are contradictory when examined from a more abstract point of view. The identification of contradictory evidence starts with analyzing each research stream. Subsequently, the results from these analyses need to be synthesized to reveal contradictory evidence. For example, two studies look at whether eating chocolate affects heart health. Study A says 
chocolate is good for your heart. But study B says it's bad. This disagreement creates an evidence gap. So the results from studies allow for the conclusions in their own right, but are contradictory when examined from a more abstract point of view. Number two is the knowledge gap, which is common in prior research. There are two settings where a knowledge gap, knowledge-wide, might occur. First, knowledge may not exist in the actual field of theories and literature from related research domains. Secondly, the results of a study might differ from what was expected. For example, if scientists haven't explored what causes a rare disease, that lack of information is a knowledge gap. In chart, desired research findings do not exist. That is called knowledge gap. The third category is the practical knowledge gap. That is more related to practice. That is more concerned with finding the problem solutions with specific interest in, in the practice side. These are the gaps in the application of research findings to practical situations. For example, more research may be needed to understand how to implement evidence-based practice in real-world settings or identify barriers to implementing such practices. This kind of gap is a discrepancy that can motivate new research. A practical knowledge gap or the action knowledge conflict arises when the actual behavior of professionals is different from their advocated behavior. In this case, research could seek to determine the scope of the conflict and uncover the reasons for its existence. For example, doctors might continue to use a particular medicine because it's been there uh, their go for years. Even though new research suggests there is a better alternative, that leads to the practical knowledge gap, professional, which is shortly uh, professional behavior or practices deviate from research findings or are not covered by research. The fourth category of the gap is methodological gap, which is a type of the gap that deals with the conflict that occurs due to the influence of the methodology on research results. This gap addresses the conflicts within the research methods in the prior studies and offers a new line of research that is divergent from those research methods. It is noted that it might be helpful in various research methods, especially if specific research topics have been mainly explored using a singular or common method. For example, if a survey used to measure a people's happiness only has yes or no questions, it might miss the nuances of human emotions. A more detailed questionnaire could give better insights. That's kind of methodological gap. In chart, a variation of research method is necessary to generate new insights or to avoid distorted findings. That leads to research gap, which is empirical gap. An empirical gap is a type of gap that deals with the gaps in prior research. This conflict concerns whether research findings or propositions need to be evaluated or empirically verified. For example, the empirical gap often addresses the conflict that no study to date has directly attempted to evaluate a subject or topic using an empirical research approach. Similarly, we can also see other examples. Some might believe that a new teaching method improves student learning. But until it's tested in actual classroom, we don't know for sure. That's the empirical gap. 
In short, research findings or propositions need to be evaluated or empirically verified. The sixth research gap is the conceptual or theoretical gap. This is the type of gap that deals with the gaps in theory within the prior research. For example, if one phenomena is being explained through various theoretical models, similar to a methodological gap conflict, there might be a theoretical conflict. Researchers and scholars could examine whether one of those theories is superior regarding the gap in the prior research. Theoretical gaps are common in examining prior research on a phenomenon. For example, this might be a general theory about motivation, but it hasn't been specifically applied to understand what motivates volunteers at a charity. So in short, theory should be applied to specific research issues to generate new insights. There is a lack of theory, thus a gap exists. Finally, there is a seventh type of research gap, which is called contextual gap, data gap, or the population gap. A population data or contextual gap is a common type of research gap recognized among researchers. Such a research gap exists when you find a considerable amount of existing research on a specific topic, but there is a lack of research in specific contexts. This could include a specific population, perhaps a particular age, group, gender, or ethnicity. There are always underserved populations that have been under-researched. This, this gap is the type of research regarding the population that is not adequately represented or under-researched in the evidence base or the prior research. For example, if previous studies on medication have only been done on adults, we have a population gap because we don't know if the medication is safe for children. Research regarding the population that is not adequately represented or under-researched in the evidence base or prior research, for example, gender, race, ethnicity, age, etc. Summarize all these seven types of research gaps. This table summarizes all the types along with their respective definitions for you to understand clearly. In order to reflect what you have understood from different types of research gaps, take your time to support an accurate research gap that aligns with your research project's requirements. I will upload the part two of this video lecture where students will be able to understand more about research gaps, how to identify one, and why we need to support an accurate research gap before embarking on a research project. How to spot a research gap with practical examples and a step-by-step -step approach to formulate research gap. Finally, I recommend you to subscribe for more insights on research. Research Compass 303 is a dedicated YouTube channel for researchers, and you can also reach me out on restcom303 at gmail.com. That's all for now. Thank you.